Hello, today we will talk about the RCV. What's the RCV? Well, RCV stands for Reference Change Value. It is described by Fraser in 2012. You can find reference if you look here. Let's talk about the reference change value some more. It is a tool used to objectively assess if a significant difference has occurred between stereo results in an individual. It can also be used to assess significance between a result and an upper reference limit, lower reference limit or another cutoff value. What do you need to calculate the RCV? First you need the probability or z-score with which you want to test significance. You need the analytical variation of the test and you need the biological variation of the test. Let's look at these variations. Suppose we have a person and we take a sample a number of times. We will get a bell curve with an average. The width of this curve is the biological variation. If we take a blood sample of this patient and measure it multiple times, we also get a bell curve with an average and the width of this curve indicates the analytical variation. These two combined is the total variation that we can obtain when measuring serial results. The formula for the reference change value is the square root of 2 times the z-score times the square root of the analytical and biological variation to the power 2. We use the square root of 2 because we have two results we want to compare. So how do you choose the z-value? Well, in a normal distribution, if you have the first value in the middle of the Gaussian bell curve and you want to look at a difference, the difference could be on either side of this bell curve and therefore a two-sided confidence interval is most appropriate. Whereas if you want to look at an increase or a decrease from the first value, you just have to look at one side of the distribution because you're only interested in uh, looking at significance within that part of the bell curve. So that means for a one-sided distribution, all of the 5%, um, if you have a 95% interval, is on one side of the bell curve. Whereas with a two-sided confidence interval, the um, uncertainty is split between the upper and lower limits, so 2.5% on either side. So that's how you can look at the difference. And there may be exceptions, but this is the general idea. And a z-score we often used 1.96, as this provides a two-sided 95% confidence. The coefficients of variations are the analytical and individual variations. That's the formula of the RCV. Let's start with an example person. We have two results. The first result is 4.6, whereas the second result is 4.3. And we want to know whether the second result is significantly decreased due to therapy. For this, we could either use a two-sided confidence and a z-value of 1.96, or a one-sided confidence with a z-value of 1.65. In this case, we are only interested in a decrease, so the z-value of 1.65 will be the most appropriate in this situation. Next, we need to know the variations. The analytical variation is derived from the lab, while the biological variation can be derived from biological variation point EU. For this, we need a within-subject biological variation, as we want to indicate a difference within a person. Let's go back to our example. We will use the marker PSA, which is used in the diagnosis of prostate cancer. The biological variation of PSA is 6.8, and the laboratory informs us that the analytical variation is 2%. Now the formula can be filled in and this results in an RCV of 16.5%. If we multiply our first value, 4.6, by 16.5%, we obtain a value of 0 0.76. Values 4.6 and 4.3 are less than 0 0.76 apart from one another, and therefore we can deem that the second value is not significantly lower than the first. So it may seem like the therapy is working, 
but it's not biologically and statistically significant. Thank you for your attention and I wish you good luck with your studies.